So I, I read, I got up this morning uh, uh, relatively early and uh, settled in and came across this headline, which I went, okay, someone's smoking something. So, and I can't believe the editor actually published this. But the headline, Donald Trump is going to be elected. And I started to read it and I went, aha. This was my aha moment uh, because what our next guest did was something that we've talked about on this show. He put into words, uh, in print, sort of the backstory, the undercurrent, the thing that no one for the past year and a half has really focused on as to why there is a Donald Trump and why a Donald Trump won the prize and why yet and still, given everything that we know today and everything that we see and what the polls are saying and the Electoral College, Donald Trump can still get elected. And here is what set it off for me. Um, This quote, Donald Trump is going to be elected president. The American people voted for him a long time ago. And then he started to go through a series of uh, reasons for that. And so to help us go through some of those reasons, let's welcome Michael Rosenblum, who's the father of video journalism, the founder of Current TV, former president and founder of the New York Times TV, He's also the CEO of RosenblumTV.com and the VJ.com. You can follow him on uh, on Twitter at RosenblumTV. Michael, welcome to Steel and Unger. Hey, Michael. Well, thanks, guys. I appreciate you having me on the show. And it was a real pleasure reading your piece this morning uh, in the Huffington Post because it 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 sort of encapsulated for me, as I said, what I'd been saying about this con contest from the beginning and why it's been frustrating for someone like to me to explain why Donald Trump is. And I wanted to go through, as you set out at the beginning of your article, the reason Donald Trump will be elected is because the American people voted for him. And how did they vote for him? They voted for him when the History Channel went from showing documentaries about the Second World War to Pawn Stars and Swamp People. They voted for him when the Discovery Channel went from showing lost treasures of the uh, Yangtze River uh, Valley uh, to Naked and Afraid. And they voted for him when the Learning Channel moved from something you could learn from <laughs> to my 600-pound life. Um, <laughs> all of those are prime examples of absolutely friggin' correct because I watch those channels and I sit there sometimes going to myself, what happened? But you're absolutely right. Explain how this now translates into the rest of this campaign. Well, I mean, those channels, you know, they don't shove that down people's throats. They put on the air what their viewers want to see. They're reflective of what the average American or the vast majority of Americans actually want to look at. As a society, we spend five hours a day every day watching television, and an astonishing 8.5 hours a day staring at screens, which are mostly filled with video. And we've done this for 50 years. So, so this kind of constant inundation with garbage, which is what that stuff is, has, has an impact on people. It, it's almost hypnotic. And, and the result is that, that the whole country has been geared for many, many years to this kind of mindless and, and shocking kind of entertainment. And along comes a candidate who, who's exactly a, a, a reflection of that kind of entertainment television. And of course, people resonate to him, and everybody's shocked. No, no one should be surprised. People tuned intelligent things a long time ago. So to me, Trump is just an absolute reflection of the kind of television we've been watching for a long time. And it's no surprise. And as, as I wrote in the article, I think the guy is going to be elected because this is what America in their heart really likes to watch all the time. Michael, can I take some exception? Just a couple yeah, of sure. quick points. Number one, all the shows that you just named. It, and they yeah. did replace shows that we would all consider to be a higher quality, except that nobody watched them long before there were reality shows. Take all the yeah. shows that you just named and add up the yeah. average ratings, and they don't equal the ratings of a failed sitcom. Now, speaking of crap TV, crap TV yeah. has been with us. I am 65 years old. I began TV, and I've been watching crap my entire life because that's what it's been. Yeah. In truth, we have now some of the smartest TV not at the places where you just mentioned, but places like HBO, Showtime. Um, we're getting the best TV. So I'm, I don't well, know that I well, buy into I mean, there's, I, there's I, that many people watching. I don't watching. know that there's it's that. It's not necessarily, it's Go. not crap per se. It's yeah. The fact is that we live in a society that's driven by entertainment. And whether your entertainment is Seinfeld or your entertainment is My 600-Pound Life, 
is kind of immaterial. The fact is people have to be constantly amused and entertained. And Trump is amusing and entertaining, and that's what they like. It's not he's dumb and the shows are dumb. It's he puts on a good show. Hillary puts on a crap show. Hillary is not entertaining. And that's why people just don't like her. That part I agree with. So, I mean, we, we, we have developed a culture that prizes entertainment above everything else. And it's not just politics, so that's the most definitive thing. In my opinion, and this will go off the deep end a little bit, I think we stopped going to the moon, you know, 40 years ago because it was boring to look at. We like Star Trek, we like Star Wars, because that's exciting. And when you see the world through the lens of television, it doesn't matter if something is fiction or something real, as long as it entertains people. So Trump, the guy, is just endlessly entertaining. That and, and that has been, from my perspective, one of the big drivers in this campaign. And, and you, you summed it up well uh, at the end of your article when you talked about Donald Trump is great TV. He knows how to entertain. Un- he understands ratings. Hillary Clinton is crap TV. <laughs> she may be yeah, smarter, better prepared, a better politician. It won't matter. She's terrible entertainment. That's just how it is. Depressing but true. He is Kim Kardashian. She is Judy Woodruff. Woodruff. He gets better ratings. Who would you rather watch for the next four years? And it it says something, I think, about, you know, outside of the esoteric, you know, discussion about the disruption inside the political parties, um, and certainly within the GOP, you know, as a result of internal warfare over ideology, that really pales in comparison to that underlying current that's being that's really kind of driving the culture and driving our perceptions of these two individuals. Sure, I think I think that that you know policy is great among policy wonks talk about policy, but at the end of the day, the average person, you know, they talk about this likability thing with with George Bush. It's the same thing. It's just, it just translates down to, to who resonates better with people. And the reason that people like Bush and, and Obama, to some extent, versus Romney, resonate better, it's not because people look and they kind of you know, uh, dissect their policy and go, I accept his tax proposals. Nobody cares about that stuff. What they think is, who, which guy is better television? And that's, that's an indictment of our culture. And we've created that culture ourselves. We spend five hours a day, every day, staring at this stupid thing, day, year after year after year. we always did. It's our single greatest activity, except for sleep. And that has to have an impact on people that really nobody wants to look at. But actually, I mean, Rick, you just heard you say we always did. But actually, no, we didn't. Um, As a child growing up, I didn't spend five hours a day watching television. Uh, When I came home from school, yeah, there was a television in the house. But I spent that time outside recreating or, you know, doing something slightly intelligent like reading um, a book or whatever. I, there, wasn't the, there wasn't this kind of hypnotic attraction to this box. Yes, Actually, but, yes, there was. Not for you, I understand, no, but, I'm just but saying, I but I'm did just, spend that time. I mean, that, that's fine. But I'm just saying, it, it, you know, I think as, as a broad sweep of culture— um, it was much more patchwork. You know, a lot of families didn't have televisions, um, it, certainly not in my neighborhood, uh, maybe in, uh, in a few others. But in the 1960s, that was still a very high priced commodity to own. Um, and so yeah, you know that would saying, explain why they weren't watching it. But I'm just saying, I'm just saying. a limited amount of viewing. It's still, it gets in your, if you go to the average American today and you say to them, a horse is a horse. 95% of people are going to go, of oh, course, of course, of course. course. Right. right. Where did that come from? Except that, wait, I, I, I got to challenge but you then, but then things, they can't. Michael. But then they can't tell you who the sitting vice president of the United States is. That's, That's absolutely correct. true. That's absolutely correct. true. But I got to challenge a few things. For one, I, I got to say that, that you point out that George Bush won because we wanted to have a beer with him. And by the way, I, I got a lot of love for that point of view because I've always said running for president is like running for president of the high school student council. It's popularity. Mm -hmm. But let's remember, George Bush did not win the popular vote. He won the election. So that's number one. Number two, let me ask you this. If your if your prediction should end up going awry, what does that Mm -hmm. say about the American public? They're more intelligent than I think they are, but I don't think I'm wrong here. Look at how far Trump got already. It's incomprehensible. I think even Republicans turn around and go, how the hell did this happen? And they don't understand it. He understands it. 
The guy's been a reality star for 10 years. He understands the medium. I agree with I mean, that. He, 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 and, and now he's, he's done this. He got rid of Manafort, and he's done this deal with, with what's his name? From, with uh, uh, Bannon, uh, uh, Steve Bannon. Steve Bannon. 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 All right. Yeah, and that guy also, he, he understands what resonates with people. And what resonates with people is not policy. What resonates with, what resonates with people is pure entertainment. We and, are just an entertainment culture. And see, we that's, like to be amused. I mean, I don't know if you read Neil Postman's book, Amusing Ourselves to Death. The guy called it 30 years ago. That's where I think this thing really breaks down um, because people do like that, that part of it, that, that entertainment part of it, and they respond to it's, it's titillating, it's interesting, it's exciting, it's unpredictable. Donald Trump has been all those things in this campaign. It has not been about policy. It's not been about ideology. It really has been about that little box. Uh, the fact that on shows like Meet the Press, you wind up getting, um, you know, Donald Trump to call in. Well, Michael, that we, we've hit the top of our hour. I really appreciate you calling in, man. It, that really, uh, it was a great piece. We ask you, our, our folks to check it out on Huffington Post. Michael, we've got to talk after the election, Michael. Yeah, absolutely. Michael Rosenblum, father of video journalism. You can follow him on at uh, on Twitter at Rosenblum TV.